In this problem, we're asked to find the p-value in a right tail hypothesis test given the test statistic z is equal to 2. And what this means symbolically is that if we look at the normal distribution, a z-score of 2 means there were two standard deviations to the right of the mean, and the p-value is represented by the little green area that we see under the normal curve. This really is nothing more than a shade normal problem where we're given the z-score of 2 and ask what is the area under the curve greater than 2. We can do this problem using either the shade normal or the normal cumulative density function. And as a review, the shade normal function, we would go to the second distribution button, then to the draw menu and select out number one, the shade normal function. Since we're shading above the number two, we'll put in the number two as a z-score, then a comma, and then the E99 and hit enter. And our distribution is drawn and the shaded area we see represented with the area given as 0 0.02275. The answer for this problem needs to be to the thousands place which is the third decimal place, so that the answer should be a p-value of 0 0.023 for a test statistic of z equal to 2. The same problem could have been done using the normal cumulative density function, hitting second distribution, and then the number 2, and again putting in the number 2, followed by a comma, the E99, and here again we have our answer, which we would round to the third decimal place, the thousandths decimal place, as 0 0.023. In a closely related problem, here we ask to find to the nearest thousandth the p-value for a left-tailed hypothesis test given the test statistic z is equal to negative 2. Notice that we're given a z test statistic, which tells us we're using the normal distribution. The z of negative 2 is the number negative 2 on the x-axis, and we're then asked to find the area under the normal curve less than negative 2. This again is a problem that can use either the shade normal or the normal cumulative density function. And for the sake of time, we'll just simply use the normal cumulative density function going to the second distribution button, then hitting the number 2. And since we're shading below, the input will be first the negative E99, the calculator's understanding of negative infinity, then a comma, and the negative 2 using the negative button next to the enter key, and then the number 2. And our answer is again a positive 0.023 to the nearest thousands. Keep in mind that although this z-score test statistic was a negative 2, the area is always positive because the area represents a probability and probability can never be negative and will always be a number between 0 and 1. Another very closely related problem is where we're asked to find the p-value in a two-tailed hypothesis test given a test statistic, and in this case the test statistic is negative 2. The important difference between this problem and the previous two examples is that when the area under the normal curve is found, in this case to the left of negative 2, to find the p-value, that number, the area, needs to be doubled. And that is because a two-tailed hypothesis test is a hypothesis test performed in both tails. So our p-value symbolically is represented by the two green areas under the normal curve in this diagram. To find that area, we will first find the area under the normal curve to the left of the z-score negative 2. To do that, we'll simply use the normal cumulative density function as in the last problem. And going to the second distribution number 2, and inputting negative E99, then a comma, and then negative 2, we have our answer, but that's the area under the normal curve to the left of negative 2. We have to double this to include the area under the curve to the right of positive 2. So our answer will be multiplied by 2. Just simply click on the multiply by 2, and our answer will be 0 0.046, which is the area under the curve represented in green in the two tails of this normal distribution. 